very similar problem to what I have. Well, how did you get right, over there? Right, right. So I went over the parts I had for the Hess four-wheel drive override, but I never really talked about how to install it. Um, this is the Hess four-wheel drive override switch. <coughs> Excuse me. This is the Hess four-wheel drive override switch. So pushing that engages the clutch on the front differential, giving you essentially an open front end but a lock different, locked in differential, so three-wheel drive, if you will, which is actually really nice for bashing around and spinning the tires. Um, I four-wheel drive works really good for crawling over stuff, but when you start spinning the tires really hard, sand or mud, you get a chatter or a judder out of the front end for the, when it's searching for traction. So this gives you four-wheel drive, but with no I four-wheel drive, which is kind of nice. I went ahead and wired in uh, the front LED bar while I was in there and I also put in a switch for a roof LED bar which I don't have yet but when I did the wiring for this a piece of grass stuck back there when I did the wiring for this I went ahead and tied in all of the accessory wires for that so like I said LED bars down there pretty nice I'll come up here and I pulled this apart already <laughs> pulled this apart already set that over there so I'll scratch it too bad uh, so I went ahead and and put all this stuff in. Um, Honda, like I went over in an overview video, was nice enough to include, uh, these are factory cables that could support a winch. Um, the Hess four-wheel drive kit actually came with uh, this plug right here. And this plug plugs into the factory blue connector right there, which is key power. Um, and then it has another plug that plugs in down here on the side of the differential, which is super easy. It's an inline plug. Um, super super easy to do but when they do that Hess includes a piggyback plug for additional power so this is actually a key power switch or a key power wire out of the Hess plug that uses the original wire so I ran that over there's a zip tie I cut off I ran that over to here and I installed my own power distribution panel um, as of right now uh, I've got four fuse holes in there. Uh, this first fuse is carrying the front light bar and the two light bar switches. Um, when I wired in that second roof light bar, that red wire hanging down right there is actually the trigger wire for a relay for the roof bar. So that's kind of nice. It'll be super easy to install when I do it. But yeah, I included this uh, power distribution panel along with this little uh, ground bus bar, you know? Um, I went ahead and ran my own six gauge, six gauge wires back from the battery uh, up here to give my own, you know, battery power. I didn't want to take the winch wires because I wasn't sure if I'd ever put a winch on this. I wanted to reserve those over there for future winch. But uh, while I'm here, I've got some more room on the ground bar. I've got some more room in the power bar. This is fully weather tight and sealed, which is nice. Um, I got to rework this relay situation at some point. I got to get it taped up so nothing's rattling and yeah, I ran those those six gauge wires were pretty easy to run through the chassis and then just hooked them right up to the battery Which was nice um, But this gives me a lot of room for uh, Upgrades and updates, which is pretty nice. I also put a I also put a USB charger in the back of the glove box um, That's battery hot all the time, but uh, uh, That's kind of nice for if you're charging uh, GoPros or your phone or whatever if you're out on the trail That glove box is pretty watertight and I sealed it with um uh, RTV sealant so it's very very waterproof uh, but it's nice you can put your phone in there and it won't get all muddy but while I was doing some wiring updates I decided to also upgrade the guarding in here so I went ahead and built these panels now provided I haven't finished them they're not you know smooth or anything like that and I could do that but it wasn't super important to me but uh, I got these panels off of uh, Amazon uh, these black plastic panels which are actually pretty nice um, fairly thick but pretty sturdy and you can kind of bend them around and mold them with heat and I basically made myself a little firewall so 
kind of nice. It keeps some of the heat out when your fans kick on and do that. You're not, you're not getting a shit ton of heat thrown back in the cab. And then also, uh, keeps it pretty clean in here. Um, maybe a little bit harder to power wash on those long drives. You can see I got some dirty water down in here, but I can take care of that. You know, every now and then I'll pull it all down, take the front end off of it and power wash it with no plastic on it. But, uh, so far I think I like it, uh, pretty easy, quick, uh, it didn't cost a heck of a lot. Um, brief fact purpose, the factory, uh, rubber thing there just to kind of keep the pedals dry. But I think in future, I'm going to take another one of those plastic panels and I'm going to build myself a inner fender bit for down there. So that'll turn out pretty nice as well. Um, yeah, I, the only other thing I got is I did some riding this weekend. I put about another 30 miles on it, and my pre-filters that are down inside of here worked really well. Uh, the a little bit of dirt on that filter sock, but nothing crazy. So, and confirmed, we did some testing with our 2019 with the factory intake, and I haven't lost any power running through two more filters. So, the LTR Uni filter stuffed on the end of the intake seems to work very well. I'm very pleased with it. So. Yeah, just a little update. Thank you guys. If you have any questions, let us know.